Well, the Chatelet's principle is the primary theoretical concept of this unit. Essentially, when a system is at equilibrium, it wants to stay that way. So if you stress it out, the system is going to try to oppose that change to return it to a state of equilibrium. Well, the different stresses that you're going to see are the uh, change in concentration of something, or increase or decrease in temperature, or pressure or volume. What you won't see as a regular stress is catalyst. You may be asked about it, but Catalysts don't do anything to the equilibrium. All they do is get you, to, get you to your equilibrium system faster, they increase the forward and reverse reaction rates, but they actually don't change the equilibrium at all. So that's why we won't see an example of that one. So, when we apply a stress to an equilibrium system, we need to predict which way the system is going to shift towards. Okay, essentially, if I add a reactant, then I'm going to want to get rid of the reactant, which means I would shift to the products. If I add a product, I want to get rid of the product, and thereby shift to the reactant. So you see, it's kind of opposite. And the analogy I like to use is the teeter-totter. It's a very simple way of helping you predict shifts. So in this example, we are trying to figure out all the different stresses that we could apply to this system to make more ammonia. Well, if I want to make more ammonia, first thing I need to decide is which way I'm trying to shift towards in the end. So which stresses would cause this to happen? So with the teeter-totter idea, whichever side of the teeter-totter is pointed up, that's the way you're shifting towards. So, for instance, let's look at concentration first. Uh, probably the easiest one to deal with Think of the teeter-totter again. If I add more nitrogen, so increase the concentration of the nitrogen, what's going to happen? Well, this teeter-totter is going to react like that. So that what that is telling us is that I'm going to shift to the right because the right-hand side or the product side of the teeter-totter is pointed up. I'm going to shift that way. What's happening? Well, when I add the additional nitrogen, the system wants to get rid of it. So hydrogen that's already there is going to react with it thereby favoring the forward reaction producing more ammonia and more energy as it is. Okay, so that would be one way of producing more ammonia. We could increase the concentration of nitrogen. Another way, increase the concentration of hydrogen. Well, let's look at ammonia now. Although this seems a bit counterintuitive, in order to make more ammonia, I'm going to have to remove it. Well, if you look at the tear it explains, explains why. As the ammonia is being produced, I'm at equilibrium. If I take away the ammonia, this side of the tear it gets lighter. So in order to replace that missing ammonia, the system will respond by making more of it. Nitrogen and hydrogen will react, get more ammonia and more energy again. So I could remove the ammonia to get more. When we're looking at energy changes or temperature changes, I have to first make sure I know whether I'm dealing with an exo or endothermic system. Well, two scenarios here would be to increase or decrease the temperature. So let's look at increase the temperature first. If I increase the temperature, that's the same as increasing energy. So a question we often hear is, where am I adding the energy to? Well, treat it just like it's another substance. You're adding the energy wherever it is in the system. So this is an exothermic reaction, so the energy is over on the product side, so I am adding the energy right there. So if I add energy over on this side, the teeter-totter responds like that, so I shift to the left. So if I was to increase the temperature of this system, that wouldn't get us more ammonia. I would actually reduce the ammonia, because it would be consumed as I produce more reactants. So. Answer must be cool it off. Well, if I cool it off, the system's going to want to replace the energy to warm it back up. So if I cool it off, it's the same as taking away this energy. So this side of the heater gets lighter. So then I'm going to shift to the right to replace it. So that's temperature and concentration. They kind of are the same in how you deal with them. Next stress that you're going to see is dealing with pressure and volume. Pressure and volume, you have to think a little bit more because you can't just do an instant shift, you have to relate it to the number of moles of gaseous products or reactants that you have. So, 
as an example, this question. What happens if we decrease the pressure on the system? Well, I have a difficult time uh, conceptualizing pressure. So what I do is translate it into volume. Well, a decrease in pressure is the same as saying an increase in volume. Okay, exact same thing. Well, if I increase the volume, that means I have more space to move around. If I have more space to move around, then I'm going to have fewer collisions. So more space would mean fewer collisions. Well, that's going to change the equilibrium. So if I want to re retain my equilibrium, get it back, then I'm going to have to shift to the side that's going to increase my collisions. So which side would increase the collisions here? Well, the side with more moles. Well, I have one mole of nitrogen on this side. I have three moles of hydrogen. So I have four moles on that side versus two moles on the product side. So if I was to increase the volume, that means I would actually shift to the reactant side. Okay, increase in volume, decrease in pressure, I'm going to shift to the reactant side in this case. Okay, most important, when I increase the volume, that's the same as adding more space. And when I add more space, I'm going to shift the side with more moles. So, easiest way to remember, more space, more moles, less space, less moles. So, back to the original question, I want to make more ammonia. Well, if I want to shift to the right, that means I want to shift to the side with fewer moles. Well, fewer moles requires less space or less volume. So if I want this scenario, I'm going to have to decrease the volume of this system. Mm -hmm. That is how we analyze and the Chatelet's principal system. But we'll see some more examples in another video of what happens when you add uh, a substance to a system that isn't involved. We'll also look at how to analyze the Chatelet's principle graphically.